1995, the Third World Women's Conference was held in Beijing, China. The conference prioritized key actions to be taken by countries in championing women's empowerment. Kenya was one of the participating countries that adopted the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. To what extent has the declaration informed individual feminists to act on issues that affect women? And has the baton been passed down from one generation to the next? Hello, I'm Joan Birika. I'm about to meet three incredible individuals, some of the most prolific women's rights advocates of our times. We'll have an intergenerational conversation about feminist activism. Let's meet them. I used to be in parliament. I was elected three times as a member of parliament, but currently I'm carrying on some of the work that I accomplished while in parliament. <laughs> My name is Professor Julia Ojiambo. I am the Executive Director of um, Community Advocacy and Awareness Trust. We host the National Women's Steering Committee. The National Women's Steering Committee is a platform that brings together women's organizations and individuals that work in women's empowerment and advancement from you know, the different areas onto a common platform to be able to articulate issues that we consider of critical concern to women. Okay, my name is Daisy. Daisy Cherop. I'm Dani. I am a Christian. I have very. My name is Dr. Njoking Gomis. Uh, my mother's called me a gypsy because I don't practice medicine anymore. Um, because I kind of felt that um, the health of people is not a thing that can be locked inside of a hospital. Um, right now, I'm doing outreach and partnerships at an arts organization called The Nest. I have very many opinions about um, what being a woman means, um, especially in, 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 in the African context. Jockey, Daisy and Julia, really a pleasure to have you and to talk with you. It's fantastic to be here. Yeah, <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> Um, Julia, what made you want to jump into women's rights activism? Are you a feminist? Feminism is not a new word. It was there with us during those days. We wanted to join, you know, others to join us. If that what is what's meant to mean, feminism. I'm a woman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, okay. yeah. I am a woman and yeah. I think I was born a woman. Yes. And you know, uh, at our times, even as a baby, mm. you identified as a woman, mm. as a potential mother. Mm -hmm. You know, time would not allow me to narrate each and every experience yes. of uh, a girl child during those days. It was tough. Where are we? We are not the only ones. Where the majority of women were yeah. in the countryside, undergoing FGM, extraction of lower teeth, all sorts of things happening to them, mm -hmm. all around the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. There, if you didn't remove the uh, lower teeth in a lowland, for instance, <laughs> you are not mature. <laughs> not <laughs> and that was also a sign of uh, coming yeah. of age. Yeah. Here <laughs> in Central and uh, in Rift Valley, it was FGM. Yeah. And the girl child has suffered all this. Mm. Right. Not only that, majority of them were carrying water on their backs, in their head, huge mm -hmm. parcels of all, uh, uh, household uh, goods. Mm -hmm. There was no man to help because that was not even thought about. Mm -hmm. You carried it alone. There was the land to till, there was the cooking, there was the grinding of your grains. There were no mill, millers mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah. So everything was just harsh and it was the girl child. Yeah. And you saw the little boys running to school and the girl being left at home. Mm -hmm. right. Right. So you, you obviously saw social injustices against women. A lot of women, social yes. And you felt it necessary to... The little girls I played with at home also hated me now. When they knew I was going to school and they were not going to school. Yes. They called me, you privileged, lost ship. Mm. Yeah, they thought we were lost. 
because they did not understand what it was. Daisy, tell me, has anything that Julia has gone through resonate with you? What for you inspired you to not keep quiet about social injustice? For me, though, the first job that I applied for is actually what made me change mm -hmm. the way I saw things because um, you know, they looked at uh, my qualifications, they were like, yes, you're qualified, but we can't give you this job because you're a, uh, it, he actually said I was a girl. I was pretty young, I think I was maybe 22. And so for me, I was then exposed to uh, girls being denied the right to education simply because they were girls. Um, little girls being circumcised, you know, the female genital mutilation. Mm. And I began to realize how important it is for us to have women who actually understand the plight of women, you know, and to highlight the plight of women and to demand that women be accorded equal status because we are not second class citizens. We are half of the population. And how dare our government allow these kind of things to happen? How do you just ignore the plight of people? We have leaders who are supposed to represent the issues and nobody's representing the issues of the girl child mm -hmm. and, and women, you know, okay. um, as, as, as human beings, you know, because why would you allow another human being to live like this, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it's really very, very shocking. And when I went to other places in the country, I was like, you know, you, you just can't keep quiet. I think um, I'll begin by saying how, how, how I came to terms with, with, the, with the word feminist, because like, it's such a, it's such a political label. Right. And um, so I remember when I was in second year of university, um, my, my classmates, in, you know, in the, in the crazy way that classmates do, my classmates had this little um, paper and I'd been voted feminist of the class. And so I remember I fought with the term feminist for a very long time. Definitely I knew I believed in the equal rights for men and women. Um, growing up, and, and my experience is a lot like Daisy's, where things in the house were never really segregated as to boys do this, girls do this. And so I realized that whether or not I, I embraced the term, I was, I was a feminist for good or for bad. You know, right. if I was the loud woman who has come here to say that actually women should not be treated like this, that's fine. If I was the loud, if I was the, if I was the loud woman who was coming to ask why, why don't men, why aren't men bothered by these things? Mm -hmm. You know, this, this, this idea of equality between genders cannot continue to be a gendered thing. Yeah. It can't. Like, like, we will never get anywhere if it continues that way. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Julia, with the inspiration you got and having been successful in actually occupying a position of influence, um, what made you pick on certain things? I can assure you it was not easy. Yes. The word woman was nowhere in any vocabulary mm -hmm. in Kenya. And to get a government to write in their documents, woman, mm. was like a, you're climbing Mount wow. Kilimanjaro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Woman. What do, what do people tell Just you? Just the word woman. That, what do people tell you at that point in time? The, like, in the policies? Yes. You are a woman at home, and that was all. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. But not in and, the and, leadership. And, and he means not in, And he, 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 he meant everybody. Yeah. everybody. He meant everybody. He meant everybody. He <laughs> everybody. <laughs> so we struggled to get mm. that into writing. Even mm. the language. Yes. So yeah. Arena we mobilized mm. the community development workers to get that written in. Our memorandum that we took to Mexico, 1975. That's the first time the word woman appeared in, in our official documents. Mm -hmm. So we then developed the women policy. And we came back with, of course, an agenda of development. Right. So we ran with that one. Right. Through that, we could propagate education for the women. We could propagate water, hygiene, food, housing, and everything that went with that. The absolute and basics. All in there. Mm. We were interested in uh, motions and bills that touched on women. Mm. And those are the ones that you will not get support for in parliament. Mm. Because who would help you mm. pass a, a bill in parliament? It was difficult. But slowly it's come. We uh, uh, got a few um, support mm. from the, some of the women, uh, men members, and we moved on. Fortunately, the few of us who are in parliament were very committed mm -hmm. and united. Mm -hmm. and, it's focused. and focused, very focused, very focused, and we're friendly. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And it, it must be very difficult to have sympathize with the women in parliament. But even they <laughs> should, because we are also <laughs> swore to say, <laughs> later on when we went to Beijing, we mm. came back and said, we will use the word woman because now, now we have instituted it. Mm. At 1985 in Nairobi, we talked about advancement of women mm -hmm. here, yes. mm -hmm. the forward-looking strategies. Mm -hmm. That is what took us to Beijing, mm -hmm. and we, Beijing produced the plan of action, action yes. on, based on the Nairobi forward-looking strategies. That's At right. Nairobi, we said now everything out, advancement of women, mm -hmm. and we'll talk uh, loudly and clear mm -hmm. about our advancement. And that encompassed everything. All those languages, all those vocabularies, everything came in. It was now acceptable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a really great place because for me, my introduction into activism was when people like Julia were in mm -hmm. Parliament. But to see the, the working relationship that was there with women in academia, for me, by the time um, uh, Beijing was taking place, I was still very young. Yeah, you very, very young. And um, of course, we knew it had caused a stir because um, the leadership mm -hmm. was really quite uh, agitated. You know, mm -hmm. the president was like, oh, these women, they have come from Beijing and they want to turn the world upside down. They want to bring these unnatural practices. Mm -hmm. And for me, that represented a very comprehensive approach to women, women's empowerment and advancement right. because it looked at every possible area that was affecting the woman mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and i think that uh, um, the fact that we've lost focus on those tw 12 critical areas of concern is a problem So Joki, what is informing your taking a certain stand on a certain issue? Um, I, think, I think the thing that informs me is seeing mm. what an intensely personal journey it is. Right. Like when I'm, when, when, when I'm here talking to Beshu and to Daisy, you can see like the progress that you make. You make one realization and you say, hmm, okay. And you make another one and then another one. And that this process is not just necessarily for the people who are visible and fighting in the public space, the quote unquote activists, but how does that process happen mm. for the active That's citizen, like mm. our idealized active citizen? How do you make those jumps? What is informing those jumps? What's trickling down and how is it trickling down to you from the political space? And where do you find the individual grappling with all these things, mm -hmm. being able to form their own opinion, mm -hmm. such that this woman who may not be able to go to Beijing and realize that actually a tuk-tuk would make my life a lot easier. But she can come home and shift mm. a thing mm -hmm. um, that makes her own life a little bit easier. Mm. And, and it starts even in, in, with, with children mm. and how we treat children and how children are supposed to go from 0 to 18 with no personal agency and then suddenly you have a photos card and an idea and you're told <laughs> mjibonde. Absolutely. And, and there's no way in which um, we introduce people to the idea of what are your own thoughts? There's no analysis, even in the ways in which we are taught. It's how, how individuals interact mm. with some of those things. In, in medicine, you meet people in such a, in such a personal, vulnerable space. Mm. Um, and then now you, you, you're there writing a P3 for a woman who has been beaten up by her husband for the third time. She's coming to tell you, yeah, here are my x-rays. You're seeing fractures in these bones. And you say, okay, um, what's informing your life choices? Mm. Mm. You know, and then mm. she says that actually she has to stay in that house because um, I have three kids. And if he goes, what am I going to do with them? I have no skills. I left school when I was. And then you see that that's not just a problem for a woman in Naivasha, it's also the problem for a woman in Nairobi Hospital. Mm. It's the same thing. The same thing. The same, level. same that's thing. And, and you know, that those are the things that have informed mm. um, the provisions in the Constitution. Mm. Because for me, I think one of the biggest disappointments um, is that when we have so many women that we can actually radically transform this country by changing the lives of women fundamentally. And it will change the nation. Mm -hmm. Because I will tell you that what is good for women is good for everybody. Mm -hmm. Because they are the primary caregivers. Mm -hmm. They are the first port of call for socialization. Your primary source of socialization is the woman. We have a constitution that is very clear about provision in leadership and decision-making, electoral processes, mm -hmm. the role of 
the women to ensure that we have at least a minimum requirement, but we actually have a law that has been brought for, to amend the Constitution to make it progressive because it is too difficult to bring women into politics. Yet there are solutions that exist That's right. that will bring us in and that will bring us in back. Mm. Because for me, the women's movement is not an organization. Mm. It is women working together in, in the different arenas that have been arenas. identified. And that's why I keep going back to the Beijing Platform for Action. It really is a very comprehensive Fantastic. approach. Fantastic. Julia, I'll jump back to you and ask you, um, did you preempt, did you foresee that the patriarchy, as Professor Maria Nzomo aptly puts it, has an uncanny ability to reinvent itself. Yes. Did you ever foresee this? Yeah, well, maybe mm -hmm. we thought we were overcoming it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it would die. Yeah. That it would <laughs> die yeah. through the, <laughs> the forward-looking <laughs> strategies, advancement of women, and the <laughs> plotting of that plan of action. Mm. The implementation of the plan of action has failed us. Mm. And this is where the women, and I think the women of Kenya, and maybe the women of the region, maybe the women of the world, mm -hmm. need to have another look at it again. Mm -hmm. Where have we gone wrong? I think probably in the other uh, countries it's working. Mm -hmm. But here, as we say, there's that disconnect. Which, which specific areas, if you look at the 12 priorities, to what degree has Advance, advancement been seen. A lot has happened. Yes. And a lot is happening. Yes. And in fact, that was our prayer. And I believe that it would, ha would happen when we put together the mm -hmm. Beijing plat of, uh, platform of action that our women will move. And we see them now in public positions. Mm -hmm. They are in the governance, mm -hmm. they are in the parliament, they are in the judiciary, they are in, in uh, technical fields. Mm -hmm. They are doing very well. Mm -hmm. But we also insisted that when they go there, they must perform mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? and be efficient, be yes. seen to produce. Mm -hmm. And they are doing that. Women need to learn. And this is one thing I always tell the women. Listen, we need to learn how to separate issues. Mm -hmm. Women need to become more emotionally mm -hmm. intelligent and learn how to separate issues so that we address our commonalities mm -hmm. and our common problems as one. So that it, no matter what your sphere of engagement, we're saying the same thing about certain things, that there are certain things we absolutely will not tolerate as women. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who I am. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter whether I'm educated or not educated. Is then the women's movement, is a feminist movement a feminine debate? No. No. no it it isn't. No. And, and it, it cannot never be. be. Yes, it it cannot be. and it should not be. What strategy or tactic would you use to challenge this exactly this phenomenon that has been talked about? What would you do? You know, we still have the power. Yeah. Power to decide mm. and design. Right. And you know, our history is very short. As a nation, we're still very young. Mm -hmm. What is even more important for, for us to recognize here is that it's only yesterday the women education in Kenya has come to ma mm -hmm. mature. The women with the skills are still very few. That's mm -hmm. why you still have a few women offering to go into parliament, mm -hmm. to go into very high executive position, policy positions. What really, we, where we really need to put the focus now mm -hmm. is to get enough of the women, as they now have acquired education, mm -hmm. to train into skills. Mm -hmm. If it is legislative skills, enough of them. Because, and that's very important. We have to see what the other women have done. Mm -hmm. Because today we are struggling for two thirds meaning that the women just want a third. Mm. And this a third thing was written into our laws in 1985. Mm. Mm. It's not a new thing. Mm. So we, today we should be talking about 50-50. Mm. And not two thirds. Mm. That thing should be out of our thinking and debate. Until we start to look at that level, mm -hmm. where we can get a critical mass to question and act. And in our own numbers, like the... Uh, Rwanda women mm -hmm. and pass a law at par. Mm -hmm. That's the level that we want to be at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also see us as human beings. Mm -hmm. Because when you talk of uh, the man, 
being the only one who can innovate mm. is no longer true. <laughs> yeah. That's no yes. longer we true. We can also innovate. Mm. Yes. And we just need a little time to get there yeah. and innovate. Okay. So you know? essentially, the, the challenge today, Joki, is translating these so-called priorities and very well cast yes, um, uh, you know, policies and then translate it into a value system. Yeah. And that's into, where it all into, ends. Into, into a value, value system. system. How and in a changing environment. In, yes. a, in a shifting yeah. environment. Yes. Able mm. to, to morph into the to exactly. into the yes. environment. So that as, a, as, as a people, uh -huh. there are things that we absolutely will not accept. Mm. And to be seen, not just as human beings, but as partners. Mm. Because you see, patriarchy has redefined women's empowerment to mean role reversal. Mm. And because of that, it is resisted. Mm -hmm. Because when I say that I want to take over your space, you're not going to give up that no, easily. No. But if we and talk actually, about if you, And actually, if you, think, if you think about a man, mm. if a man with honesty mm. looks at the position that a woman has in society, mm. why would he want to be subjugated? You know. You wouldn't. No. Absolutely. It's true. You know, even at family level, mm. and I don't think this is now happening, even you now your families, mm. maybe, you know, as opposed to our families, where you find mm. a man and a woman who are educated to almost the <laughs> uh, same level, same level yeah. understanding, reasoning, and performance, mm -hmm. these things don't exist no. anymore. Mm. That's right. And I can see them slowly mm. dying out. Mm. It's just that it's going to take a little longer, maybe mm -hmm. not during our lifetime, mm -hmm. but it's a uh, I want to think. I want Daisy. to think. I think it should be within Daisy. our life. I think. I think it's that mm -hmm. um, one mm -hmm. of the one of the things that we need to be deliberate about mm -hmm. when it comes to translating policy into practice yeah. within the shifting environment is the thing of categorically amplifying mm -hmm. voices. I should go and look for the things that Julia wrote mm -hmm. and analyzed and think about them and talk about them with the people that yes. I know. Mm -hmm. Julia can now go and read, there's a, there's a fantastic um, journal called Brainstorm. Their first edition was Writings of Kenyan Feminism. Mm -hmm. What are the young people saying mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. There's another one called The Wide Margin. Mm -hmm. What are people saying about the ways women interact in the private sphere, in the public sphere? That's one thing. The other thing that we absolutely need to mention is the, 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 the area of sexuality. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times, the women's movement has been able to make the moves it has made because it's not necessarily dived into the space that makes us all adult human beings, mm -hmm. which is sexuality. Because instantly there you start finding the moralities of patriarchy. Yes. Because of who the man is supposed to be yes, yes. in the sexual arena and who the woman is supposed to be. I think that's very and even, and even And even when you now start going into um, non-heterosexual identities, okay. you now start finding the, the effeminate male being treated the way a woman should be treated in society and that for some people translates into being able to be beaten being vulnerable to rape those are all human rights violations mm -hmm. you know or women being punished for kind of aspiring towards male privilege for looking in ways that women are not supposed to look or being in relationships that women are not supposed to be in so right. things like that where there are obvious of overlaps and, mm -hmm. and, and abilities for allyship between movements, I think, right. are fundamental Fantastic. to the moving forward of some of these things and to kind of breaking down those barriers that we'll be talking about awesome. that have yeah. kind of divided women for so long. You know, I'm so glad that all this is recorded because I don't even know how we are going to pick what is more important than <laughs> what. It's been such does, a fantastic yeah. discussion. Yeah. I have quietly sat and just been totally, I have a PhD right now, you know. Mm -hmm. I've just been taught right now by really, you are important and prolific individuals. And as, as we have said from this conversation, let's look across. Is Julia's work really fully done? Like, can she now just relax? Is she no. really far, far away from me? No. Is no, Njoki is it done. is it necessary for for Njoki for Daisy to continue to tap into some absolutely. of the absolutely. absolutely this is institutional memory it is. fantastic it is. Yes. I could and not be more proud of, of yeah, hosting must, this yeah, so must. thank you so very much for joining this awesome discussion I think we will have to develop deeper into the ideas that have just been surface mentioned here so really thank you again thank, thank you so thank you. very thank much you. let's have some juice. <laughs> awesome. While conferences play their role, I feel like a much bigger role can be played by enabling individual women or individual smaller groups of women in much smaller contexts to figure out what they want and how they can get it um, in a less, with a less kind of formulaic approach. I think for us as Africans, um, it means that a lot more of us have to be telling 
stories a lot more critically, a lot more imaginatively, and a lot more out of the box so that we can really depict the complex realities we live in. When you look at culture, there was a passing on of information, rights, and, and certain privileges, and, and certain characteristics were passed on from age group to age group. Now with the advancement of civilization, as we call it, we seem to have let go of that very critical uh, uh, aspect of our culture passing on information, and I mean good information, I mean we, we must decide what it is that we want to pass on and what we absolutely don't want to pass on. I, I have found someone whom I think I want We to must be very deliberate in how we are passing on this pattern because we need to be able to inculcate certain principles and basic values as a value system, the equality of persons, you know, both male and female, and the integrity of the human person. A lot has changed and yet a lot has yet to be done.